I believe you never stop improving every day. Try and do something to improve yourself. But now we've been talking motivation. Let's get to education. I can see you're a good writer or a brilliant writer. The first part of the book is like a novel, more like a story. Could you give details about the book? And I don't want to give away too much, like part one, part two, the differences, and give us a, an idea of what the book's about. The first part is a combination of sort of a history of, of espionage and, and ransomware. Uh, when I say ransomware, I mean like organized crime type of ransomware, the big boys, espionage, nation states. I did a lot of the investigations that are in that book. Well, I don't say I, uh, if you look at the references, a lot of them are me. And even a lot of them that they don't have references references are because I worked on them in the government. And I just, I can only talk about the stuff that's publicly. So I just don't put my, my, my name on it, but they're, they're my, they're either my stories or stories that are important to understanding espionage, but they're cool, exciting stories to read. And, you know, the, the first part is supposed to just do that. It's supposed to enforce why you have to treat advanced threats differently. 90% of the threats that, you know, security analysts see every day are your low to mid, mid-level threats that um, software automation, automated defenses are going to identify. Well, advanced threats have a human being behind it. And this is a, an argument I've had. It's much better now. To, I don't have to argue as much, but it's still an argument that you have to treat these advanced threats completely different. You have to handle them different. You have to you have to look at them like a detective as opposed to a police officer. You can't just stop the threat. You need to know why they're coming, who they're associated with, what weapons they have access to, because they're going to come back. Unlike, you know, just a police officer just wants to stop the crime now and, you know, let the courts work it out. Like that's the difference. So in these stories in the beginning is to really explain this is what happens when you don't handle these correctly, when you don't um, dedicate the right, the correct resources to it, when you don't don't investigate them and continue to look into why this, this attack is taking place. And these are the results and they're extreme results. And I think that first half really, really hammers home like, wow, this is a big deal that this happened. And wow, look at the ramifications because they didn't do X. And it's just so interesting because these stories are these really, really creative ideas that bad guys have had to, to defeat the good guys. And unfortunately, in a lot of most of those stories, the bad guys are the ones who who, who win, if you will. And because I worked a lot of those um, those stories, you know, all the ones that I worked from semantic on forward, and I was able to write about um, in, in in great detail because they gave me you know um, the thumbs up with that when I worked That's there. Right. There's a chapter on how it affects financial institutions, and it's all about uh, nation states targeting financial institutions. And then there's other stories about like the history of ransomware, how these big ransomware groups that now do you know enterprise attacks started because they didn't for years and years. It was just the smaller attacks um, that you know on somebody's computer that they got through spam in their email. And now there are these organized criminal gangs in Russia that have, you know, treated like a business and have 200 people working for them and, and are taking down the world's biggest companies. So it sort of shows that evolution, how we got to there. And then we talk about election hacking. Everybody's like, oh, election hacking. But we only think about the U.S. The model that was used against the U.S., took place tw twice, many years before against other countries, at least in, in, in the US, a lot of people aren't even aware of that. But all the signs, their playbook, everything was there for us. We just didn't we just didn't see it. So anyway, they're just all the cool stories in the first half. And then we get to the second half where it that's really for the for the analyst. The first half, anybody interested in, in security, espionage, geopolitics, that they'll they'll enjoy. And I tried to write it that way. Like a spy novel, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And then the second half hammers home on this is how you do it. And one of the things that differentiates me from a lot of traditional security analysts is that I came from the government. And because of that, I was an intelligence analyst first. So I went to school and I learned analytical models and theories that prevent you as a human being um, from making the wrong assessment or from making a, a, a call based on your gut or an assumption. I took a lot of the models uh, that I used and I've and I altered them over the years to fit as I as I left the government, things changed. So I made those models change to fit on how to do attribution on you know how to do different types of um, analytical workflows just just to keep that your data flow structure and to make sure that you're uh, you know keeping everything true and how to create a hypothesis and then use that flow to have data to either prove disprove or to prove it and then how to qualify that you know using different sort of classifications I don't mean government classifications but I mean how, is this you know low medium high confidence those sort of things how to do time zone assessments when you have attackers 
um, come in. You can actually get an idea of where they are in the world um, by, by doing time zone assessments. And you do pull all this information from headers, from emails that come in, spear phishing emails. And then I go from that. How do you analyze spear phishing emails starting from the bottom up? These are the fields that are pertinent. This is why they're pertinent. This is the story it tells you. And this is how you can use it against your adversary. We go through all of these things and tools that I use, um, a lot of open source, some that are for pay, but I really wanted a researcher, somebody who just had a passion like me to be able to get this book and, and be able to actually use the tools. And because you can't afford that if you're just a researcher you're doing it for fun, you got a $8,000 a month virus total subscription. That's yeah. just not realistic. So we talk about ways to get around those things and, and alternatives um, in addition to those type of things you could use in your work. And then finally, at the end, we have a threat profiling chapter. It explains how to do threat profiling, which is the behavioral aspect, which is very important with advanced threats because they're humans behind it. And then we do a use case. And in that use case, uh, we take a APT-28, which is a Russian GRU, one of their intelligence agencies. We take a spear phishing email. It's one email. We use all these tools and resources. You know, we take the data, we pivot, we collect, we analyze, repeat the process, document. And we're done. at the end, when we're done with it, we've laid out this massive infrastructure, all these personas, all these spear phishing emails, all these organizations that were targeted that all sort of fit into a political playbook, if you will, to fit Russia's needs. And it's just, it's, I mean, I, I even get excited when I did it because I didn't expect it to come out that good. Like that was just, it was, it was a little bit of luck. It became like the perfect example. And it's a little bit dated, you know, it's from like 2014, the spear phishing email, but yeah. it was just, it tells such a good story and it made for such a good teaching example. And because it comes from a Russian intelligence agency, I just I had to use it. It just brings everything taught together. And uh, I think it makes for a nice picture at the end to, to really feel like you've grasped the book, if you will.